look at this posture reading for a few minutes uh, today. And this partial reading brings us to the end of Genesis. For 12 weeks, the first book of the Torah has instructed us about life, about life from the beginning of the creation to an emphasis upon one family whom God has chosen to be the creator's representatives to the nations of the world, and from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Joseph, and finally to the last days of Jacob's life, the Holy One of Israel, progressively describes how he works through individuals to accomplish his will. Powerful. We have to see... (coughs) God's whole picture. And we have to see it unfolding. Now, as the first book comes to a close, uh, the patriarch Jacob inherited, inheritor of the, of the covenants and blessings bestowed upon Abraham and Isaac. Uh, it's now his turn. He is in a position to extend those same blessings to his children and to the sons of Joseph who will make up the nation of Israel. Uh, Jacob is in a very unique uh, position to not only bless his sons but also to declare prophetically the future destiny of his sons. Now, those two aspects are normally involved in a father blessing his children. The day comes when uh, Jacob knows that he will pass. Pass through the doors of this life into the life to come. Jacob needs to get his house in order. He's very concerned about his final resting place. It was important for him to rest with his father and with his mother and with his grandfather and with his grandmother. The cave would serve well as the resting place for his body until the resurrection. And it was time for the blessings. He does all that was passed down to him, witnessing his father Isaac decades earlier. The double portion blessing is extended to Rachel and to his beloved Joseph. who Jacob designates as the heir of the birthright blessings. He witnessed, we witnessed Jacob adopting Joseph's two Egyptian sons as his own in a unique way. By making them his own, he passes the double portion on to Joseph through his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And, and now, the scriptures say, and now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine as Reuben and Simeon are. The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd, All my life to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. And may my name live on in them. And and the names of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. And, And may they grow into a multitude in the midst 
of the earth. Now, <clears throat> there is a triple uh, reference to God here in which the angel is, is placed on an equality with our Elohim. Not a created angel, but the angel of God. Or as it says in Isaiah 43, 9, the angel of God's face. The God before Abraham and Isaac walked had proven himself to, to Jacob, to the God who fed and the angel who redeemed. Or as we have it in greater light, his shepherd and his redeemer. See, Jacob had experienced a great deal of hardship in his life. But the angel of his presence had kept him from the evil of his troubles. Even as it says, but the Lord stood with me and gave me power that through me the preaching might be fulfilled and all the nations might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every wicked work and will save me from, for his heavenly kingdom. To whom be the glory to the ages of the ages. Amen. And again, God chooses the youngest over the firstborn. I wonder if Manasseh saw it coming. God, in bestowing his blessings upon his people, he gives more to some than to others. He often gives most to those that are least. And he chooses the weak ones of the world and he raises the poor out of the dust. Amazing. But this is our God. This is what he does. As it pleases the Lord, so it is. And, and so is this classic passage the birthright blessings of Jacob are now extended to the two sons of Joseph. Well, he says that the two of them will grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. For he says, I know my son, I know. He also shall become a people and he also shall be great. However, his younger Brother shall be greater than he. And his disciples shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, By you, Israel shall pronounce blessing, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. And so he put Ephraim before Manasseh. That's his choice. That's purely God's choice to do that. And toward the end of his life, Jacob calls for his sons. And, and he says, Assemble yourselves that I may tell you what shall befall you in the days to come. For a we, a generation that love to know what's coming. <laughs> Gather together and hear, O sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. If you take these prophecies and you add the prophecies that are declared generations later at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, you can actually see an, an accurate picture of what the future will hold for the various sons of Israel and their generations. And, and so God is revealing, revealing a lot in the lives of the patriots. Uh, but far more important 
far more important is the fact that he is revealing himself in the lives of the patriarchs. They were theocentric. We all know what theocentric means, don't we? Revolving around God. Where life revolves around God. Our self-life is often out of balance. And by nature it tends to be all on one side. Some of you might remember the poem entitled The Tea Party. <laughs> the Tea Party poem goes like this. I had a little tea party one afternoon at three. It was very small, three guests and all, just I, myself, and me. Myself ate up the sandwiches while I drank up the tea. It was also I who ate the pie and passed the cake to me. Man, I love that poem. <laughs> it's one of my favorite poems. And, and it describes a self-centered life to the T. And it's the opposite of the theocentric life in which we all should, should, should have. It, it takes some development, doesn't it? It takes some development to where we come in here and we talk about others and not about ourselves. It, it's quite a life indeed that all revolves around the centrality of God and not the centrality of us. Theocentric thinking is necessary for spiritual maturity. Uh, there's no spiritual maturity in a self-centered life. And in Genesis 49, 24 and 5, Jacob blesses Israel, uh, Joseph and reveals the secret. Reveals the secret of their dynamic lives. Listen to these verses. Uh, Joseph is a fruitful son, a fruitful son by a spring. His branches run over a wall, and the masters of arrows harass him and shoot, and an archer look, lurks for him. His bow abides in strength, and the hands of his arms are made idle by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. From the shepherd, the rock, the rock of Israel. Here are three names for God. Uh, the mighty God. The mighty God is the first name for God that Jacob uses to bless Joseph. It's also used in Psalm 132, where it says, O Lord, remember Jacob and all of his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord, he vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. And again in verse 5, until I find out a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. And Isaiah, and the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel says, alas, I will ease myself of my foes and avenge myself of mine enemies. And again, Isaiah says, And I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. And you will also suck the milk of nations and suck the breasts of kings, and you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, 
the mighty one of Jacob. The God of Joseph was a mighty God of his father Jacob. And I find it interesting in all of these verses that say the mighty one of Jacob, only one says the mighty one of Israel. All of the others refer to Jacob before his name was changed. He's the God of Jacob. He is the mighty one of Jacob. His strength came from the mighty one of Jacob. It's one thing to know that he is the mighty one of Jacob. It's another to know and to experience the mighty one of Jacob. Working through us by his spirit. And we all desire to see the power flow through us for his glory and for his kingdom. But it doesn't happen in a self-revolving life. It happens in a theocentric life where all that we do, all that we say revolves around the eternal one. Blessed be his name. A powerful lesson this is. Well, it says, Joseph's bow abides in strength and the hands of his arms are made idle by the hands of the mighty one of Israel. From the shepherd, the rock of Israel. The shepherd. Shepherd would be the second name for God that Jacob uses to bless Joseph. This is a powerful name for God. It really is. Especially significant was it for a family of shepherds. And just like they shepherd their sheep, so God, the good shepherd, shepherded them. And all there have been a reference to the shepherding work of the Lord in Jacob's words to Ephraim and Manasseh. This is the first time where God is actually called the shepherd. And we all know Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff that comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall... The Hebrew is run after. (laughs) Run after me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Seems to be written with Joseph in mind, but it could have been written for David in mind. Or it could have been written for you in mind. For God is our shepherd. But do we know him as that? Do we really know God as our shepherd? See, that's the question. That's the real question for us today. You see, God is 24-7. 24-7, always shepherding His people. And it was Yeshua who said, I am. 
I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Powerful. Powerful. But what good is it? Lest we enter into it. The very meaning of our God. And the last is the stone of Israel. It's the third name for God that Jacob uses <clears throat> to bless Joseph. It too is uh, first mention of God revealing himself as a stone, the rock. It's used as a name for the Messiah in Isaiah 28. Therefore so says the Lord, Lord, behold, I place in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He who believes shall not hurry. Within the Hebrew word even is both the words Av, Father, and the word Ben, Son. It's a beautiful name for the eternal God. And so the Almighty would bless Jacob, Joseph with blessings of rain from the heavens and with the waters from the deep. The water flowing through the pores of the ground beneath his feet, as well as offspring and livestock. It's the sixth and final time El Shaddai is used in Genesis. This name has been associated with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and now Joseph. I am the all-sufficient one. Don't go after others. I am. I am. And so all of these blessings uh, which Jacob had experienced would shower upon Joseph and upon his descendants. He was the one who was separated from his brothers, separated out from his brothers for special honor and service to God. This was the man who was different. The man who was different from all others. And then the providence of God and then the grace of God, it often happens that the first becomes last and the last becomes first. It's, it's not about the blessings of Judah or Joseph, Ephraim, Manasseh. It's all about the mighty God. The mighty God of Jacob working mightily through his chosen. His chosen and separated people. He is, he was, he will always be the mighty God of Israel, the shepherd, the stone, the God of our fathers, the El Shaddai of all eternity. And so another poet put it this way, This one's a lot better. This poor put it this way. <clears throat> Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be free. Force me to render up my sword, and I shall conqueror be. I sink in life's alarms when by myself I stand. Imprison me within your arms, and strong shall be my hand. Amen. <laughs>